Hey, Hickok45 here. I have a SIG P238 that we're going to try out today. Can you see it? My hand hit it, didn't it? It is uh, a small gun, and it's uh, been out for a couple of years. I think SHOT Show uh, 2009. I have not uh, had much experience with it, but uh, this one is on loan from a young lady who is actually the daughter of another fellow shooter in the area who has lent us a gun or two, so uh, we appreciate that. It's one of those guns I get a lot of requests for, and we're going to try it out a little bit. It's it's a pretty neat gun. It comes in a couple of calibers. You know, this one's 380, and then of course it also comes in 45 ACP. You know, in the same same model. <laughs> you didn't fall for that, did you? Actually, this is my Series 80 1911 Colt. It just had a baby, right? <laughs> I looked in the safe, and there it had an offspring overnight. Isn't that cute? You know, they they kind of match, don't they? The little boy looks like the daddy. Same grips and everything, rosewood, or at least rosewood color. <laughs> no, enough joking around. It is a, a, a gun that is um, well liked. It is uh, one that is, uh, I think, pretty well sought after. A lot of, lot of talk about it, a lot of writing about it, and it's uh, a fairly desirable firearm. It is a little different. I, you know, I don't know if I've seen anything negative about it. You might have, but it's... Uh, because it's patterned after the 1911. That's why I have the big boy out here in the 1911, because you have same basic operation. You know, it's, it's different than, say, the LCP Rugers and the, the cars. You know, you've got single action trigger and those things. So let's just take a couple of shots with it, load some uh, ammo in it, and uh, see if it will shoot. Let's shoot the 380. Uh, we're shooting some PMC here, and uh, we'll just throw a couple down range. It, uh, has a good feel of uh, the ergonomics of the gun. I, I have to say I'm impressed with, and I've shot it a few times, just enough to get a little bit of a feel for it. And it, it is like a little baby 1911. It certainly is. So uh, let's take a couple of shots here. See if I can hit anything with it. Let's start with a two liter, just for kicks. All right, all right. And maybe that guy right there. Okay. All right. You know, it feels feels pretty good. Does a whole lot of ammo. Six rounds in the magazine. But uh, you know, that's about what a revolver holds. So, and it's a small, small little guy. No doubt about that. It uh, has a stainless slide, and the uh, slide has a they call it nitron finish, I believe coating but it is stainless and then it's an alloy frame and it has the trigger that is single action there it's I think it's around a seven pound trigger it's supposed to be poundage on trigger it doesn't tell me a whole lot I've got to feel the trigger if it's a mushy trigger a bad trigger it almost doesn't matter to me what the weight of it is uh, I just want to feel the trigger I don't mind a heavy trigger if it uh, you know has a nice clean break to it but there's your night sights, your sig light, I believe they're called. And uh, so you've got that, the three dot system. And they nice sight picture. Yeah. I mean, how many guns this small uh, have sights like that? You know, those are those are very good sights. They really stand out. And that's that's one of the criticisms of a lot of small guns. Of course, now this gun is in a price uh, range of what five, six hundred dollars, just depending on whether you're paying retail or, or whatever. And uh, again, it is the 1911 uh, action. I'll go ahead and take it apart. It even breaks down pretty much like a 1911. I don't get the I'll get out there. Slides stop, and uh, it's a little different. You don't have your plunger and all that, but I'll get it. Get it started, and uh, once you get it apart, then it is a little bit more like you know, I don't know, one of the wonder wonder polymer guns. There we go. Fingernails get a little longer when I'm in trouble. And uh, just pop that seat. Get it out. Barrel lane looks almost like a you know SIG or a Glock barrel or something. So neat little slide. Look, it seems to be well made. You know quality quality piece, which you would expect from SIG. You know you really would. Uh, they do excellent work, no doubt about it. Excellent work. As do most of the modern manufacturers, it's just a matter of whether you like their particular style of gun or not. Okay, 
this uh, has to go in exactly right. There it is. Okay. That back. And so it has to be down. There we go. All right. As is with any 1911, you want to be careful. Get that through the link there, the barrel link. And then be careful not to scratch the frame. Because a lot of people do that. <laughs> and that hooks the barrel. There you go. Match it up. All right. Back in action. So it operates like a 1911. You know, so you got your thumb safety. You know, this gun's clear. It's empty. Uh, you got cock the hammer. Thumb safety. Yeah, just like standard 1911. How's that? Pop the safety down. Fire the gun. Click. Okay, got to cock it one way or the other. You know, rack the slide. Got hammer has to be back before it's going to fire. You know, as with most guns. But this has an external hammer. Okay. All right. You got you know a striker is a hammer in a sense. So, but you got a hammer here. Uh, and your safety. Now, one thing I want to point out that's different about this safety. You know, with a standard 1911, you know, you got safety disengage, put it, engage it, and of course it locks everything up, you know, and uh, that's the way this gun's designed to be carried, cocked and locked like that. Okay. All right. Now, notice the difference. With this gun, once you have the hammer cocked, you engage the safety, it doesn't lock up like a classic, you know, 1911. You can still rack the slide. So I would consider that an added safety device. You may like it or you may not, but I could put this magazine in, which I will, since I could, and I can rack around it, you know, without disengaging the safety. So through all of that, the actual safety was on. That's one thing you cannot do uh, with standard 1911. Uh, and I'm not sure about the bigger SIG. They make a 1911 now. Uh, they may be the same way. I don't know. But that's that's really novel to me. That's that's, <laughs> that's strange. It really is. It's odd. Uh, so this gun is hot, and the safety has never uh, been disengaged here. Yeah, so that is uh, an added feature. I would, for me, it would be as a pocket uh, gun, especially because you know the safety becomes more of an issue with a pocket gun. Okay, so let's try it a couple more times, and then we'll gab some more about it. Let's try it over at the uh, gong just for kicks. Got him. Yep. Got him once, I think. We popped him a couple of times uh, messing around. You have to hold about, uh, oh, I don't know, a couple of uh, feet low. Uh, you know, at least the sight, you have to sight a couple of feet low in order to hit it. But, you know, it's not exactly an 80 yard gun. But it is nice to, to always try that with whatever we're shooting. Uh, so that's that's one of the things I wanted to point out, especially that how that safety is. And that is one of the things you have to uh, consider. You're looking at uh, this is considered a pocket gun, although everybody wouldn't necessarily carry it in a pocket. But it is one of those guns that's going to be fished probably in most cases fished out of a, a purse, a pocket, or something like that. And you are then involved with a gun. That has a you know single action trigger, and that's that's something that a lot of people don't want any part of, and some people want that. So it's a personal preference issue. You know, you obviously want a pocket holster if that's why you're going to carry it, something like that. Now this is not designed for this gun and doesn't cover the trigger as well, but I'm sure they make one for it. So you'd want a holster you know like this that would come around and cover the trigger better, so that that trigger is not exposed. And of course you have your safety on. So when you pull this out, let me put this in my pocket. Let's see. It's not hot. Yeah, nothing in. Uh, so when you pull this gun out, unlike a car or some of the others, you pull it out and you would, uh, in order to fire it, you're going to have to thumb that safety down and you're ready to go. Okay. So you do have the thumb safety. Trade off is you have a better trigger, than a lot of people would say, but then you also have to be sure to disengage your safety. And that's the, that's the story on the 1911 in general, isn't it? It's a few schools of thought. You probably, if this is the pocket pistol you're gonna carry a lot, you uh, maybe your other carry gun ought to be a 1911. If you're kind of oriented to a thumb safety, it's probably advisable to make that kind of your mode of operation on, I guess, any of your serious guns you know, that you might carry. Just, just my advice, you know, I, th I think it's what I would do. 
if I was going to carry this or, or if I were going to carry a 1911, if that was my orientation, as it was at one time, you know, largely, then I would, uh, I would, uh, I would not be hesitant to carry a small gun, a pocket gun that utilizes the same type of safety, you yeah, know, because it's the same manual of operation, uh, you know, thumb safety, fire, disengage and fire. So. Now, I also had, comes with this other little holster I wanted to show you here, too. This, this comes with the gun. Nifty little little belt holster. You know, it's really a small gun, and it fits in there like a glove. So, you just, like that, boom. It, uh, it's a pretty cool little gun. And again, you'd have the safety on. Pull it out. Disengage. And fire. That's all you'd have to do. Let's load it up here and try it again. Got six in, get my ears on. Now I'm going to hit that gong again. I think I have to hold about a foot low with this gun. Yeah, there we go. We won't waste all the ammo on that. Let's shoot something closer. Even at that range, is not what this gun's designed for, but uh, we'll take a few more shots here close by. And use it for its intended purposes. Close range, up close and dirty. Let's move down here a little bit. Put the safety on, I'll put it in my holster. And uh, let's see. Out. <laughs> All right, he put on a show, didn't he? <laughs> nice, nice, nice. All right. Not many rounds, so you have to make them count. Uh, but that's what you always have to do. It's a, it's a sweet shooter. It feels good. It uh, it hits where. It's supposed to, other than a really long range, shoots a little bit high. And, uh, well, we got another two liter here. We can't quit yet. But uh, at close range, it's a, it's a nice little gun. Uh, once you get the safety off, it shoots about as well as any little gun I've ever shot. I have to say, you know, I like the car when I get to a gun this small. It's my favorite at this point. And I have to say it still is, because I'm not a thumb safety guy. I could make the transition if I wanted to but uh, you have to make that decision of whether or not you want to do that. I'm going to put one in the chamber here. I'm going to put the safety on, cock it, and like I showed you, you can rack one in and you've been safe through all of that. You put another one in so you could carry seven, six plus one in this little gun. And now we have an extra round, okay? And I'll put it, in, well, no, I'm not going to do that because this doesn't cover the trigger guard. If it did, I would uh, pull it out of my pocket. Okay, so we're uh, close to 20 yards away from down there, which you normally wouldn't be using this gun for, but uh, it, it's pretty nice. You can use it that distance. <laughs> sweet, sweet. All right, so I see why uh, people rave about this gun. It's a uh, it's a good one. It's a sweetie. It, uh, I've never talked to anybody who's ever shot one that didn't like it. And uh, it's just, it's just a, a quality piece and it does what it's supposed to do. And by the way, it is a kind of a replica or a copy of the Colt Mustang. If you've ever had one of those, I used to carry one of those as a backup when I was helping with the police department. And uh, for the same reason, it, uh, it had good feel. It was light and reliable and you could count on it. And uh, this is a SIG. So if you can't count on a SIG, I'm not sure what you can count on. But uh, the SIG P238 is a, is a winner, and I'm glad to get a chance to, to bring one to you. So as you know, life is good.